And we're back. With some more oxygen not included. Hey, what are you doing? Go grab that Dreco and bring them back. We're uh, we're doing a little bit of cleaning up here and getting all our Drecos in a row. We want all of the Drecos in the one spot, so when it's time to get out of here, we can uh, take them with us. Well, that's the theory. At the same time, we're doing a little bit more excavation down here. Uh, we're trying to gain access to some crude oil, and we're also going to dig up all of that beautiful refined iron that's just lying around the place. That stuff all needs to go into storage containers near the ship so we can bring it back with us. Now, for the time being, what we're going to do is go down here, grab this crude oil, turn it into plastic, so we have something to bring home with us as well. We can bring back some plastic, a bunch of Draco, some, well, some refined iron and some diamond. That would be a hell of a score. Uh, some people have suggested we stay here permanently, but... Uh, we could. We could do a bunch of things to stay here permanently or maybe make our lives easier. The problem is the amount of time it would take. We have such a small build force, it's just going to take forever. If, for example, if we had just came here, grabbed a couple of Drecos, shoved them, shoved them in the rocket and flew back home, we'd be ranching plastic Drecos by now and we'd be well on our way to the next stage of the game. But I keep getting distracted and we have such a tiny workforce to get it all done, it's taking forever. So I need to, like, just stop messing about and get this sorted. So, we're going to quickly finish off the last of this and bring everyone home. Well, that's the theory. How's their food looking? Yeah, I've limited everyone's calorie intake so they're not allowed, or food intake, so they're not allowed to eat the berry sludge for now. I want them to consume all the other food we've got lying around, like the muckroot and the meal lice and such. See? Yep. None of you are allowed the berry sludge. We need that for the way home. All right, let's uh, finish off this excavation down here or get ourselves a, a little bit of plastic while we're at it. This next step is going to be, well uncomfortable. You see, the problem is this oil refinery releases stuff at very high temperatures. The petroleum comes out at 75 C, which means all of this stuff is just, oh, the amount of heat this is going to give off as it, we run it mm, so much. It also gives off natural gas at 75 C. It also generates its own heat and it overheats at 75 C as well. So this thing is going to overheat itself after a while, but see it's 54. 54.5. Yeah, this thing's going to overheat itself really quickly, but that's okay. We just need to get enough petroleum going on to get ourselves a, a bit of plastic. Now, where is everyone? Oh, they're actually filling up the coal generators. Yeah, this thing is pretty power intensive, this whole setup. We're burning 480 watts for this oil refinery, 120 for any of the uh, oxygen diffusers, and another 240 for any of the liquid pumps. This is... Um, yeah, it's probably got a red liner grid, just just a teensy wincy little bit, but that's fine. Oh my god, red berry sludge. Uh starvation. Oh god. Consumables. Uh damn it. This is what you get for micromanaging things too much. Everyone is allowed berry sludge again. That's that's just go back and grab your snacks, people. Off you go. Off you go. Uh, let's see how Tugboat's doing. Your calories are at 1,200. Yeah, you've got enough calories, you'll be grand. Brendan, on the other hand, was down to 376 calories. That was. Oh, I gotta be more careful. That could have went horribly wrong. It's just uh, getting them to eat the lower end foods. I can't find a way to do that without just blocking the higher end foods. It, it's all I've been able to manage so far. Right, how much petroleum we got there? I think we'll go up to about a ton of petroleum and then just cut it out. We don't want to give anyone any scoldings if we can avoid it. Our first batches of plastic are being produced. We've got 120 kilos already. Uh, let's, let's maybe grab about... Oh, I want to grab about 600 kilos of plastic. It's just, there's so many nice things we can make out of it. For example, under ventilation, we can make mini gas pumps. It takes 50 plastic, and those mini gas pumps can save so much hassle. Also, high pressure gas vents also take 50 plastic. They are also incredibly useful. Germ sensors as well, and a few of the element sensors, but they're not really as important. But uh, the main one, the big one, the absolute essential one, is the steam turbine, which requires 200 plastic. With 800 refined metal and 200 plastic, you can give yourself a lovely little heat deletion device. Steam turbines are basically where all of the late game heat deletion is locked behind. There's other ways to delete heat, but nothing, nothing beats steam turbines. So plastic is sort of that big bottleneck you need to get fast. I'm thinking we're gonna need, yeah, we're gonna need about a ton of plastic. I was just thinking we need to put ref coolant into our metal refineries back home. So our metal refineries, your best coolant, we're not gonna be able to ship back much oil. It's just too hot, it'll overheat our capsule and all our people will get heat stroke. I'm thinking we just melt plastic when we get home and use that plastic, well, use the naphtha that's produced to stick into our metal refineries. It'll work, probably. I have been skipping over the gate activations for a while now, namely because, well, there's nothing too crazy going on and we're not in any uh, crux moments that require anything too crazy. So we're just gonna grab a hatchling here and release it. I think we've now got pips and hatches on this planet. I think it's a nice touch. 
It just means we have a nature reserve over here in case we accidentally annihilate those species at some point on our home planet, which, let's face it, considering how inconsiderate I am about things, I'll probably do at some point. Uh, Plastic-wise, we're doing well. Brendan here is gaining access to the last of the refined iron, and the other two are slowly but surely filling, over these, filling up these containers over here. So we've got one for phosphorite, which we need for our wheeze warts. Yes, we need them for our wheeze warts back home. And uh, then we've got diamond and a bunch of the seeds. We don't need all of these seeds, but I just... Oh, I said take all of them, why not? We'll bring some of them home we'll, so at we can at least mutate them later on. At that point, I think we're almost good. In fact, once all of that petroleum is processed into plastic, I think we can head. Uh, down here, yep. The reason we put this into water... Polymer presses overheat so quickly, they generate a lot of heat. So putting them into a little layer, layer of water really helps because it takes them a lot longer to heat up that water. And there is a fair chunk of water down there. And at the same time, they also give off a bunch of carbon dioxide and things like that. So this just helps keep that from overheating and keeps us uh, stable. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's uncomfortably warm in that area, but it would be an off that thing would be overheating already if you hadn't stuck it in a layer of water. All right, a few last uh, bits and bobs to take care of. Uh, one is this over here. What we can do is, let's see, add new module. No, swap this module for a different one. So let's say we wanted to swap this out for a rover module. And we hit build. Then what we do is we cancel it, and boom, we've instantly managed to delete that module without having to do anything. But having to send anyone out there, no one gets radiated, it's just uh, one of those quirks you can do. That is just so handy. Uh, cancel build, and done. Now we don't really need these solar panel modules. Turns out these steam engines, if you actually just read them, um, where is it? 600 watts of power, produces 600 watts of power and is connected to the rocket. So basically this steam engine produces 600 watts of power, but only while it's moving. That's uh, the thing. So until it stops, well, well, when it stops on a planet, you don't get any power out of it, but that means you can have 600 watts of power to draw inside your shuttle while it's moving around the place. That is very handy. It means you don't need a bunch of stuff like, say, oh, all of these solar panel modules. We, we didn't need those. We could just run off the 600 watts generated by the engine. Oops. Oh well, live and you learn. Alright, enough is enough. Time to evacuate out of here, methinks. And uh, we're gonna grab all the plastic. We're gonna dump that inside our ship. Then we're gonna grab, ooh, as much iron and things as we can get away with. In fact, we're running out of berry sludge. We've got about three days left of that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's time to get out of here. We've uh, we've definitely expanded out the mealwood, and the mealwood's going pretty strong. But we've only got enough mealwood to feed, like, about two duplicants. Maybe, actually, a little bit less than two duplicants. So, we need to move as much stuff as we can inside the ship. Uh, plastic can go in there. Yeah, the plastic's going to be a bit uh, problematic. It's going to be warm, so it's going to heat the place up a little bit. But that's okay. That's okay. We just need to get back home with all of this stuff. And uh, then once we've got the plastic in, or as much as it went... That's actually a thousand... You know what? Uh, refined metal. I think we're also going to take all the iron with us. We're going to turn that into steel. That's going to help us an awful lot. And uh, then on top of that, a quick install of a critter drop-off. And now... Now we can just go rope these suckers in. Excellent. So, let's go grab ourselves some Drekos and jump them onto our ship. Oh, and uh, maybe, yeah, turn that one off. Perfect. That should get us all of the necessary supplies. And a gate activation. What have we got to choose from here? I think we can take the brine. We don't need that back home, so I printed out here. Maybe at some point in the future when we come back to recolonize this planet with a better team, or a larger team, we can uh, use that water to run an electrolyzer. In fact, there is another little point of interest building down here. It's one of those ones that have the morb in it. You can actually see the morb running around, though you can't actually click on it. So let's not open that up, but there's a, a little pool of water beneath it. And there's also another copper biome or sandstone biome down here, meaning there's even more algae and hatches. And this place would actually make quite a good place to come and make a colony, though we would prefer to have Atmo suits before we came here, considering the temperature of some of the areas. We'll be back, but for now, we're just going to take what we can and run. Also, would just, anyone want to grab those those Drekos? We're going to need those. I think we're done. I've moved out all the food. I've moved out all of the diamond. In fact, let's just have a quick look in the ship here. We have 29,000 calories, which is good because that will last us, well, we need 6,000 calories a day. So that's about four days worth of calories. Mm. I, I actually killed a few animals that were lying around the place. They already laid eggs. So we have eight kilos of meat lying around the place and some meal lice. I'm basically taking it all with us because... I'm not sure we can make it home without it. We left this really, really tight. But we have about three and a half tons of diamond, 11 tons of iron, and over a ton of plastic. I'm thinking it's time to crew up. Yeah, uh, just, uh, where are they? 
Where's the last member? Ah, yes, we launched Brendan down into the planet below. So that meant he didn't show up here. Yeah, that, that's grand. Then uh, we're going to have you all crew up. We want everyone back in here now. No one is leaving. And we do have a little bit of a carbon dioxide problem when it comes to gases. But I think we'll be fine. Probably. Also, they got to deal with an awful lot of critters running around the place. Also, fun fact, did you know it's still a great hole even if you put a critter drop off? Who knew? Huh. Okay, is that all three of you on board? Excellent. Hubert is the only one allowed to operate the rocket control panel. So we will change this to... Oh, never mind. Had already set that up. Then let's begin the launch. Oh, you, can, you have to go outside? It's just annoying. Uh, fine. We'll go outside and we'll do the launch. Acknowledge warnings. Begin launch sequence. Off you go. Uh, let's see. Did... Is no one, no one going to hop on the rocket control station? Seriously? Not one of you. All right, fine. Uh, they're on the way home. How long is that going to take? 2.5 cycles. Oh, thank God for the rocket speed increase. Otherwise, this would be... Like, three days means we have enough food. We should be able to make it back without too much difficulty. Though I might want to change around their food restrictions so that they don't do the very sludge. I want to do the meat and meal lice first. Back home, we should really start doing prep work for our meat-filled ship. Uh, yeah, how much is it? how much meat have we got left in there? They're, they're chewing through it, slowly but surely. They're, they're going to make their way through all of that meat and uh, mealwood lice. Now, uh, yeah, that looks an awful lot better. We're going to sweep this sucker up. What we're going to do here is prepare this for the Drekos. Now, Drekos eat mealwood, and we're not going to even bother trying to shear them in the here. Uh, shearing them... Oh, God, you know what? We'll build it first, explain it second. Show, not tell. This here is going to be our little ranch for them. Uh, I may have to make some changes. It's been a while since I've ranched them, but we're going to do something similar to what we did over here with the pips and put down a little blob of water to stop them moving too far. To do that, we'll just deconstruct that liquid pipe there. It's got 10 kilos of, well, quite toasty water in it, but it's not that bad. Yeah, it'll be fine. Then we'll just mop that up. In fact, we'll make that a level 9 just to make sure duplicates get on that. Come on, guys. And once that's done, we can replace the igneous tail above it. Do a little bit of sweeping. The Drekos will go in here. They'll be fed mealwood raw from the floor. Oh, actually, we can do a little change here. We can deconstruct that, and we can replace those with solid tiles. The reason being, we could maybe fill the top of this with a little bit of hydrogen if we want, though, honestly, not really necessary. And there we go. And before we even start that, let's just grab a quick... Where is this? Ah, shearing station. Yeah, let's grab one of those. We'll put a shearing station right here to start. It's not hugely important, but this means we can shear the uh, the original Drekos. We'll, de we'll deconstruct this afterwards and plant the farm tiles with mealwood, but this allows us to get that little bit of uh, reed fiber out of them to start. Then we're going to make our more um, expansionary procedures over here where we'll be able to harvest the maximum amount of meal mealwood and plastic. While well, putting the finishing touches on our little ranch, uh, the rocket has arrived back home. Uh, everyone has debarked, um, de debarked except for Tugboat, who's... Um, Whatever. Tugboat will be fine. We're going to grab a bunch of these, we're going to wrangle them all up, and we're going to put them right in here. In fact, let's make sure we've uh, selected this. There we go. We should have a nice influx of Drekos and Drekletts in uh, in no time at all. Okay, we'll set that to 8, and that will be the start. Over here, we have removed all of the hatches that were in there, and we've migrated them down to this section. In fact, we can uh, dismantle all the stuff that's in there. That can all go. Perfect. Now we just got to do the, uh, well, I'm going to be doing a slightly unusual take, or my usual take on Drekos. We're not going to ranch the glossy ones. We're just going to ranch regular Drekos and use their eggs they hatch to, uh, well, starvation ranch them for their hides. And here we go. We've already got how many in here? Five Drekos. Excellent. Now, does someone want to... Excellent. They're going to go in and get a bit of a shave... That'll give us some reed fiber. Um, hmm. Once we've shaved these ones, we're not going to be shaving them again, namely because for their hides to regrow, they need to be in hydrogen. Otherwise, their scales don't grow at all. Sorry, not hides, scales. So because their scales won't regrow, we don't really care about what goes on in here. All we want to do is scale the original ones, then start the breeding process. Every single one of them is nicely shaved. They're looking fantabulous. Uh, we'll just plant some mealwood seeds there. Done. That would take care of their feeding requirements. They're a bit weird in that their food requirements are all about, well, actual plants. So 
But the thing is, feeding the mealwood here, that increases their chances of becoming glossy dracos. So every time we feed the mealwood, their chances of dropping a, drop, uh, glo dropping a glossy draco egg goes up and up and up, which is good for us. Now, uh, we're going to finish out sweeping here, and then we're going to turn this into our mass ranch for, well, our mass ranch for lots and lots of draco plastic and reed fiber. Already we've got 12 reed fiber, that's going to get us started on our atmo suits, which makes the next step of the game so much easier. This is the outline of what we're going to try and do. We're going to dump all the eggs from here into this room. Then when they hatch, they will be trapped in this room and we're going to uh, moderate the atmosphere, as in we're going to replace this entire atmosphere in here with hydrogen, and then we're going to have two shearing stations in here. The Drekos live about 30, I want to say 32 to 37 cycles, I can't remember the exact amount, but we get several shearings out of them before they die from starvation, because we're not going to be feeding them, we're just going to be basically harvesting them. And at the end of it, we get a whole bunch of plastic and reed fibre, and all it really costs us is running one of these farms, but we'll, we'll probably go up as high as two. Uh, which reminds me, I want to go down here, select Dreco, wait, where's Dreco eggs? Ah, yes, here we are. Continuous incubate. Wait, we already have a Dreco egg? But when, when did we get a Dreco egg? Did, did it drop on the ship, maybe? That makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It actually dropped inside the ship. I don't know how that happened, considering, you know, they were massively overcrowded, but hey, gotta do what you gotta do. All right, let's uh, get this started. We're also going to put in some Atmo suit ducts, and if we put in Atmo suit ducts, that means we're also going to need to put down a exosuit forge. Yes. So we will put you there, and then we're going to immediately hook you up via rather nasty wire. We're slowly but surely stripping out all of these ranches and moving them over to this section of the map, namely because there's just more space over here and it's more out of the way. And why are you napping? Hmm. I should maybe make sure that this place is set to... There it is. Grounded. No one's sleeping or using this place. What? You should not be eating in here. Yeah, just just go to bed, you muppet. Realistic though, I probably should have stopped them from doing that a while ago. Anyway, uh, on with this. Yes, let's get this finished. I'm thinking gas pump right about there. Since we have some plastic now, we'll make a high pressure gas vent so that we can suck all this oxygen out of here. And then we'll vent in some hydrogen. We just happen to have a whole bunch of hydrogen, nice and close. Though, hmm, maybe replace that with bricks. Or maybe just dig that whole thing up. And so it begins. We begin dragging the oxygen out of here. And uh, that's going to set us up for the next step, which is putting in the hydrogen. This is going to take a few minutes, though. I think that high-pressure gas vent will make things so much handier. Over here, we've thrown together a couple of copper Atmos suits. Uh, we only need two for the time being. We'll throw them into these setups. So deliver and deliver. You see, this is going to be a hydrogen environment. Not only that, it's going to be behind a w liquid lock. So every time they pass through the liquid lock, they're going to get sopping wet feet and, you know, a whole bunch of other nasty debuffs, which we'd prefer for them to avoid. So I'm thinking that one can be sweep only now. Yep, that's full. This is just, these liquid locks are... God, they're ancient. They have been around for so long, but they make such a difference. They make things so much handier. Now you can... Actually, you're done, and you can be done. So while there are nicer, prettier ways of making liquid locks, these ones are just so rock solid, they've stood the test of time. All right, uh, stations, please. Give me a atmosphere checkpoint. We'll make that out of copper, and we'll chuck that right there. That means anyone going in there is going to need to put on an atmo suit. And once they're out, they'll take it off on the way out of there. Perfection. In that case, we can deconstruct those buildings there. Gas pressure in here is dropping rapidly. That is just about finished. So yeah, a few grams of, or micro milligrams, whatever left in there. Our Jekos are all tamed already. Now, that's going to feel a bit weird because normally it takes, you know, four or five cycles to tame an animal. These ones, it takes two. Once you actually groom them, their, their uh, tameness goes up by 50% a cycle, meaning in two cycles... 100% tamed Drekos are on your side. Uh, incubation rate is 3% plus all about Wow, 17% a cycle? Six cycles to hatch their eggs. That's going to be interesting. Doing a quick bit of math, that means one incubator can support about 25 Drekos. I'm thinking we make another Dreco ranch over, well, probably here. We'll have to move these stone hatches, but that's okay. The, uh, the smooth hatches have, they've been um, evolved. We don't need them anymore. Reason being, we've already hit the achievement. In fact, let's check our colony achievements here. We've got 
Slick, enter an oil biome for the first time. Okay, there was that one. The next one up was down the hatch, produce 10 tons of refined metal by ranching smooth hatches. Also done. With all of that finished, we were able to phase those out and now we can turn these into more stone hatches. Uh, we might want to just copy over a few settings here and there though. I really did not want to keep them alive, so I, uh, I basically just got rid of the food and after a while they stopped being a problem. Done. All right, we'll uh, move over all these all these uh, stone hatches in a minute for the time being. We're at six of eight. It's going to be a while before we phase those up anyway. Once this hits eight, which is two more critters time, which will be about, oh, about 12 cycles. But I would prefer to have it all set up and ready to go. Now, how are we looking over here? Ooh, beautiful. This should only take two more seconds to finish. We've just had our first directlet egg drop in there. I'm thinking, hmm... Considering it's going to take about 33 cycles for that thing to hatch, maybe we stick in a quick incubator to start. What do you say? We throw in a quick incubator. While we wait for that to finish, we can throw in a little bit of hydrogen. Now, all we've done there is we've uh, siphoned it off of our power supply, and we're going to dump it across here. This, we can't put in too much just yet. We don't want to starve the power supply area, but we can just turn it off again. Plus, we don't really need that much pressure in here anyway. And done. That will provide more than enough hydrogen pressure for all of our, uh, our little things in there. Uh, give me a... You know what? Yeah, let's incubate them continuously. What I'm going to do here, let's see, copy, paste. And we're going to put a Dreco, a Drecklet egg in there. I'm actually make these level 9s. I should really be making all of these level 9s to make sure they're actioned immediately. Otherwise, that can lead to problems. But we'll put in a Drecklet egg in there, and then we'll just pop them out as needs be, and then they can roam around this room, just so we can get a little bit of a start on some of these things. Not going to make it continuous now that I think about it. If we made it continuous, that might cause problems. Uh, we want to wait until we get one of those plastic Draco eggs. Uh, or glossy Dracos. Perfect. And then we'll reset the timer. Nice. All right. Uh, actually, let's make that a 60 second one. It's a bit at the back of the base. They've got to put on Atmos suits. There's doors. There's all sorts of things. In fact, we can deconstruct that one. I put the door in there originally to make sure this is a sealed room and counted as a ranch. But then I realized if I left that door open, that uh, puffed might fly in and if the puffed got in there and dropped some slime or anything it i just didn't want to risk it so instead i made sure the door was on the outside one of those little paranoid things that you have that happens to you all right that actually yes perfect okay that's wooden lullaby draco egg and that's the start of that now you will notice down the bottom here they have an 89 percent drop chance of dropping a draco egg 11 percent chance of dropping a glossy draco now depending on which one you find that one's 13 percent of glossy 11 percent of glossy 11 12. the more meal wood they eat the more glossy draco eggs they drop and the thing is we could just make glossy dracos and put them in here and have the glossy dracos eat this but lucky glossy dracos require better temperatures and stuff and plus this way we get a mix. I sort of want a mix of reed fiber and plastic. This will give us a good balance of both because we're going to max out on plastic pretty quick. You only need so much. But the, the actual reed fiber, you need lots of that. Oh my God, you need so much of it as the game progresses. So, yeah, what's the next plan? Oh yeah, remove this entire ranch, get rid of it. And... What? God damn it. Oh God, looks like we lost about... Uh, four cycles. That's, uh, that hurts. That, that really hurts. Oh my god, the rocket's still in transit. No! Oh, no. Uh, I'll be back in a bit. I, I gotta, I gotta redo some stuff. I think we've caught up with where we were. Now, the only thing that changed is the second egg that dropped was actually a glossy Draco egg, which... Not good, not bad, it just means we're going to have plastic earlier. Uh, at the same time down here, I've decided to phase out one of the stone hatch farms. Reason being, we have too much food. We've got 165,000 calories worth of barbecue, 147,000 calories worth of cooked fish. Uh, we've got loads of berry sludge, bristleberry, paku fillets, pickled meal, muck root, nutrient bars. Our cook is, is just flat out. Mad zero, what are they, how are they doing on the cuisine front? 21, they're at skill level 17. 105% cooking speed buff increase, plus they're in a lit environment. Yeah, they're they're solid. They are rock solid. They will be fine. So we're going to phase out one of those ranches, and it will free up more ranching time to make sure they can take care of these Drekos. Plus, we're going to stick in a second Dreco farm over here as well. Uh, you know what? We might fill that a little bit faster if we... Yeah, we can run three incubators doing this. Why not? Oh, sorry. Two incubators running... Uh, or Drekos to go wait so that we can fill up these areas and 
These ones over here are producing phosphorite. This means we can start using this phosphorite to ramp up wheezewort production. However, if we check here under research, we'll see we've already knocked out most of the research. We've got, oh wow, one, two, three, four, five of them that require rad bolts. All the rest of them we've actually sort of done. We couldn't do the last thing, which is the data analysis ones, but you can still do the first three parts, the novice research, which requires the basic computer, the advanced research, which requires the supercomputer, and the applied science, which requires the Radvolt research. So we've knocked out all of those. It took a while. We've been doing it all in the background, but that's all finished. So we don't actually need these Radvolts just yet, not until we start to get data research done, which I'm thinking is going to be the next step. Well, actually, no, not quite. I'm thinking the next step is steam turbines, as in making ourselves a more permanent metal refinery setup. And I was thinking here. Now, uh, hear me out. All the rest of the areas were just were too cramped for space. And also that's an inferno over there as well. So unless we make it down here and rip out some of the, the uranium biome, I think our best bet is to do it over this section. What we can do is we can build it here, and then as we expand it out, we can rip out this section. We can't really rip it out right now because it's 1400 degrees. But we should be able to bleed the heat out of it with some steam turbines that we're going to be building up here. So it kind of fits. What do you think? There is one other option, and that is the top right over here. Now that we've got Atmos suits, what we could do is we could build it in this section. We'd sort of... It'd be kind of cramped. We'd be trapped between here and the walls. But I think we could do a half-decent one here. Actually, maybe more, but... Oh. See, it's a bit tricky no matter what way we do it, because we'd probably have to make the steam turbines here and stretch them across that section. Actually, never mind. We can fit four steam turbines across there and then put all of our uh, our metal production below it. We won't have a lot of space because that's in the way, but we can just sort of work around that. That might actually be a decent idea. Hmm. Yeah, I like the look of that. But I have... Yep, I, I could have got more done today, but having to go back and redo those four cycles did slow me down a little bit, so I'm going to have to cut this out here today. But I'm thinking next up, industrial brick, and then we're going to want to knock out data science. So we're going to want to redo this shuttle and turn it into data science, or, well, maybe another colony ship. In fact, judging by the amount of steel we have, we can put down a, a third steam engine. I have to figure out where we put the atmosuit docks. We can finally get people into atmosuits before they go out there. Though, uh, how much reed fiber have we got? Zero. Why do we have no reed fiber? Don't tell me it's all in this. There's two there. Never mind. All six of them were jammed inside the machine. Okay, that's uh, strange. Oh, wait, nope. There's some over there as well. Why were they not showing up? Okay, so we have six reed fiber left. That means we could produce about two more Atmo suits and still have enough to repair two suits. The problem is one of the difficulty levels we chose was suit durability threadbare, which means they run out much faster. So, for example, these are already down to durability 94 and 96%. Yeah, I wonder how quickly they degrade. Actually, let's get someone in there to have a quick look. All right, they're only going in for a tiny bit. That's 94% durability. Perfect, hop on in there. Let's see if that quick little jaunt, if it drops you by 1%. And we went from 94% to... No, no, actually. All right, so there's a reasonable amount of durability in them. I was worried they just fall apart instantly. All right, more rockets more metal refinement, either bottom right or top left, and science. Yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.